Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome to another video. Today I'm joined by David as we talk about the man JD. Janoy, Donation, the Donaissance. Oh, JD's been fantastic this season. We thought, let's talk about his remarkable story at town because he's he's had a weird story, hasn't he, David? And he signed in the summer of 2018. Paul Hurst came in. He didn't last long at all. But JD has had ups and downs during his career. First of all, David, let's talk about when he signed. Um, and I know you've got a, a bit. You're a big fan of JD. You've been crying. Oh, yeah. yes. starting. Um, but can you remember when he signed? And he was a right back we needed. Um, well, at the time, I, I never heard of him. At the time, um, coming from lower league, but then that's a similar thing. I'd never heard of Freddie Sears when he signed because I don't tend to. I mean, there are people. I mean, Brad and Matt and various other people have got this long list of non-league and lower league players who they're going, oh. He's fantastic. He's amazing. We should have, and I'm not the absolute foggiest idea. They're just sort of, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're great. And and I like signing players who are hungry and up and coming and all of that thing. So I, I was up for that under Hurst. At the time, I was more concerned about the whole transfer saga getting rid of Waghorn because um, I like Waghorn and I still think that getting rid of Waghorn was a huge mistake. And I don't think it needed to happen personally, but um that's 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 a different video um so no you know at the time it was just yeah good right back fine cool um but i wasn't particularly plus or non plus i mean the first game he had he went into the center of defense and i was very unimpressed with him in the center of defense um which given what the idiot lambert said later on um just yeah but he, he never got a chance, he, even under Hurst. I know Hurst signed him as a right back, and, and I mean the, the the madness of the Foreign Office's um, rules and regulations, meaning he was on loan. But because Hurst had a brainstorm and decided that he needed to sign Jordan Graham and Eden and um, his granny's teammate and various other people on loan that summer. Donassian, for some reason, was the one who kept being missed out of the squad, which meant you were shoehorning people in right back who weren't right backs. Um, so even Wonder Hurst, who signed him, he wasn't getting proper game time because he, he was always the one missing out because obviously you need to fit in the might of Jordan Graham's second coming. Never made any sense at the time, um, nor did Eden, um, but... So Donassian's had a hard time of it since since day one, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, not the the frustration of signing for seven hundred and fifty thousand. It's all done deal. You just have to delay the the paperwork, and then you're not even on the bench, let alone in the side, because you've got the imbecile on the left wing. Then that must be frustrating, and it's just carried on, hasn't it, for three years, really. Yeah, pretty much. And of course, Paul Lambert then became the manager. I'm sure Janoy went, oh no, because of course he played under Paul during his time at Aston Villa. Um, well, of course, the deal. He, 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 so, so he didn't really play for him Not under really. at Villa, did he? Because, <laughs> because at the time, Donassian was about 12. Um, he just sort of, I mean, Lam, Lambert having sort of, a, a, and, and various of his players have said this, he doesn't forgive, does he? And he carried that forward another six or seven years. Because he was, I think he was 18. When Lambert was there, I think he was 18. So, I mean, all, all, all the logic of sort of Lambert, basically. <laughs> the logic of Lambert. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And that's, that's another video as well, but we won't get into that. Hopefully we won't need to talk about him again. But, you know, JD, he's still got signed and got permanent in January, but then he got loaned out back to Accrington. He was there for the rest of the season. Then in the summer, we didn't really have a right back. Um, and, you know, he was part Chambers. of the season. Chambers, yeah. Chambers at right back. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but, of course, Paul Lambert was saying, oh, he's a centre-half. Um, I see him as a centre-half. Right back, maybe, if needed, to someone to fill in that position. And I know yourself, you're shouting at that. I think we had Chambers and Pets in the head of him. Um and all that sort of stuff. And then he came back and, you know, Suffolk, you know, Lambert, you know, we're relegated to League One. Um, and then he then won that starting spot at, at right back. Beginning of the season was first choice, playing all the opening fixtures as we were unbeaten. And a renaissance came about. And then KVY came in the building. And you're sort of like, oh, OK. Of course, KVY is fantastic. But then he got injured. Mm. And JD sort of came back in. But then 
Fleetwood came calling. He went out on loan, a permanent deal, and uh, it was a whole mess. But what's your thoughts? You know, all you know when that was happening. Well, this is where we are now. I, I have various frustrations um, now, which link back to that time, because to my mind, the reason why he was in was because lack of options at that point, because I believe that Enciala had been injured pre-season, which meant they had Chambers at centre-back. So Danassian sort of had to play there and he played there. Then we spend 500,000 on KBY and, he, and immediately Danassian's out. It doesn't matter whether he played well or not he was essentially speaking Lambert didn't fancy him that that that's it, that's it um the bit after that then comes because KVY plays seven games gets injured he's out for a little while there and then he comes back and he plays two more games and he's obviously been rushed back he's obviously not actually fit but at this point our season's going tits up in the classic Lambert style so he's rushed back and then he's out for the next six years but in that, then Donassian doesn't get back in. It's, it, it, where the changes come then, you've got, this is the point when Chambers goes back to right back, Edwards goes to right back. We play any number of different formations possible, anything, so we don't have to play an actual right back there um, because of that cup of tea at Villa Park 30 years ago. Um, so, and there's a catalogue of idiocy on the part of um, Lambert, which we've been through so many times. Um, Edwards, a left winger, cutting in, is preferred at right back, despite the fact that he has positional awareness of a warthog, cannot tackle, and lets people just go past him game after game after game. But no, we can't possibly play a right back. So he goes off on loan and plays really well for Fleetwood. And this is where the frustration comes in, is because he went off on loan, and a lot of our fans were really surprised that he did well at Fleetwood. I remember seeing it on Twitter, I seen it on social media, I remember having discussions about it. People were really surprised that one Fleetwood, who were promotion chasing at the time, looking far better than we did, wanted Donassian. Why would anybody want Donassian? You know, we're right, somebody who can't get into our struggling side. And he plays well, and we're sort of like, oh, well, at least we'll get, get more money for him. Plymouth come calling, but we... We we want to we don't want to sort of like sell him to a to a rival or whatever the reason is, or we want to recoup more money than the eighty thousand something they were offering at the time. But people were surprised that Plymouth, a well-run side as we're seeing this season, wanted to recruit. And I think that this is the danger sometimes is what happens on the pitch or what not, what doesn't happen on the pitch. You know, decisions a manager makes. impact on our vision is i've been told time and time and time again and i've argued with it but Danassian can't attack he's a perfectly adequate right back but he can't attack we've seen that this what was it three three assists in the last two games or something like that um earlier on when he played right back in in the cup match then he was we didn't do well overall but he his performance down that left wing down not down the right down the right wing there was it was the equal of KVY, but he's got the positional awareness at the back. I actually think, and I've argued this with Toss with various people who don't agree with me, I seem to be in a minority of one. I think Danassian, and I've said this for about 18 months, two years, Danassian is a better defender, a better right back than KVY is. Um, I've wanted him there for ages, and I am not surprised at all about this. He's got posi good positional awareness. He's solid. And the first duty of a defender is to defend. There's no good having some uh, um, Ashley Cole when he was playing for England. There was a whole feature in the Guardian about how he was rubbish at defending, but we should have him in the England side because of his attacking prowess. I know like, he's a right. He was a left. I mean, he was playing a left back. He's got to defend. That's your first thing. Anything for going forward is a bonus. You don't say. I mean, Wilder with his overlapping centre backs. O'Donnell O'Connell needed to defend first, then go on his mazy runs. And that's the same same with the fullback. So I would much rather see Danassian in there than I would KVY because you've got the positional awareness. I'm really pleased he's in, and it doesn't surprise me that it is. But I think that sometimes we need to look past 
the headline reputation of either the transfer fee or what they've been given, what, what role they've been given under a certain manager because a narrative develops that Donassian can't, can't get forward. He's just an adequate defender. KVY is God. And I think that part of that is because he's been injured for so long. So, and I think, was it Mick who said the longer somebody's out injured, the more, the, the higher their stock rises, but, you know, and we need to temper it. And I think he was saying that about one of Sears's injuries at the time. But Sears was supposed to be, and Bishop was supposed to both be amazing new signings when they eventually returned, which they weren't. And I think that we, when somebody's on the treatment table, they, their stock rises. But I think that the same goes with what a manager does with a player. Donassian was mistreated by Lambert in a big way, and I'd argue the same by Hurst. And because we've never seen really until this season him given a run in the side and trusted and believed in, then we've gone with what we haven't seen and extrapolated. But he's a good defender. He's got good positional awareness. He's strong. He's a big lad. But he can get forward. And he does get forward, but it's appropriate to do so. And I love the relationship he and Burns have built up down that right side. You know, I used to love Clapham Horidison on the left under Burley. That was one of the, my highlights, the way they interacted, the way they overlapped and, and dovetailed together. So one would cover for the other. And the way in which Donassian and Burns are linking in and one goes out and the other one cuts inside and one goes going past and the other one drops in behind. That's a thing of beauty. And you can see it when one of them contributes a goal. They, uh, they have a fantastic relationship and they go to each other first every single time that something good comes off down that, that side. Um, and I think that Cook deserves, and I've criticised Cook this season, as you know, but I think Cook deserves a lot of credit for building that relationship down that side. It, it, it's, it's one of the best things I've seen at the club for a long time. You, I mean, Donassian, given being that trust, you can link into the same way that Mick did with um, Murphy. He said, you're my number nine, I believe in you, you are my main man. And Murphy said that was what gave him the confidence for the 27-goal season because nobody had ever done that before. He'd been a bit part player. He'd come in, he'd been on loan, he'd gone out on the left wing, he'd done all that. Mick, believing him, made him a better player. And I feel that's a bit like Donassian at the moment. He's got somebody who trusts and believes in him for the first time at the club. And credit to Donassian as well because he, he's stuck around. How many other players would have done when they've been, you know, they've been mucked around by manager after manager, sent out on loan, a lot of players would go, right, well, I'm not welcome here. You know, I, for my career, I want to go somewhere else. They would have agitated for that move to Plymouth or to Fleetwood or wherever. So credit to Nadassian for that, for being a really good professional. I'm just going to cross up all the other questions I had for you because you pretty much answered them all. But um, that is fantastic, David. And, you know, it's taken... <laughs> What do you mean? I'm, I'm a gobby so and so. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good things. I'm sure anyone who, who's been watching the video today, I'm sure they got a lot of insight there. And you know, it's taken three years for Janoy to get that opportunity. He's took it, as you said. He's got three assists in the last two games. I've been impressed by him. The Renaissance is here, and he's out of contract this summer. So obviously, sign him up, Paul. Give him that contract. Because I mean, make make it make an assumption here that we go up. No, and that, that, that's that's a big assumption, but make that assumption. And because I would imagine that contract decisions that people are talking about behind the scenes, because I can't imagine Ashton's not thinking about it now. Uh, there's going to be sort of two ledgers, isn't there? There's one of if we stay down and there's one if we go up. If we stay down, then Donassian has to start sign, I would have said anyway, because he's proving himself to be a really, really good League One right back, which we knew, which is why we paid three quarters of a million pounds for it. That's not an insignificant amount of money to play, pay for a player who's never played outside the bottom two divisions. We also, I would say, can reasonably say that he can play in the championship. He might not end up being a top-end one, but if you're looking at establishing yourself in the first instance and you've got a right back in the building who can do that, who isn't rampantly injury prone, who doesn't get caught up field, 
and things. You've got a solid, solid and good performer there. You want him in there for, to start with, don't you? So it, we signed him for for the championship. I've seen nothing to suggest that he can't play in the championship. Is he a right back who you'd want if you were looking at automatic promotion from the championship? I don't know that yet because I've not seen him in a decent championship side. But I've not seen anything to say that he isn't that player. That, that's the thing is that there, 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 there's, there's a whole empty space. But there's, there's nothing to, uh, to, like to say, well, oh, we can't do that and he can't do that and he can't do that. So I wouldn't want him there. It's not about pace. His positioning is good. His ability to track players is good. So you've got lots of possibilities. We don't know about lots of players in our squad. Are they championship level? I think a lot of them are, but I'm. But we don't know because it's a while since we've been there, and how many of them were there when we were there? <laughs> you know. So, whichever way you're looking at it, for me, Danassian ought to be having con- conversations before Christmas, ideally, about a new contract. Um, I'm not Ashton. No. Well, I'm the same well, age as Ashton, but I'm not Ashton. No, well, I think a lot of people will be calling JD sign up, sign sign that sign that contract, and you know, in the summer, you know, you thought KVY was this starter, and he was the starter, but then of course he got the injury, and he's just come out of nowhere, JD. And people like yourself, they 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 they, they, they were claiming and wanting him to start, and he's showing what he's been. He should have been in there under Lambert. He should have been in there instead of Edwards. He should have been in there instead of Chambers. He should have been there for for ages. He sh- he should be in his third, fourth season now of having um, an established career. The fact that it's taken this long is a bit of a travesty to my mind. But uh, there's a lot of clamour for uh, excitement and belief. You know, that little video from Bond the other day when he was talking about lining up against Norwich and all of that. And people get very excited about that. But it's, it's the same as the summer transfer window. Everyone's getting very excited by forwards. I get excited by hairy ass defenders. Um, and the reason is, is because that, I mean, one, I like a bit of blood and thunder, you know, John Walk's my favourite of all players. And a part of that is you want to stop things. Yes, you want the bullet header, you want all of those things, but you also want to have that blood and thunder that you're going to stop stuff. Tony Mowbray, um, that, that side of things and getting... You know, whether it's Yallop, Wilness. Wilness is a fantastic right back who was underrated, I think. But um, Zondervan, Yallop, all of those. You want those players because they allow your Bon, your Selena, all of those to do their business at that end because you know you can trust what's behind you. It's why a goalkeeper is so important. You trust your goalkeeper, your defence plays well. If the defence doesn't trust the goalkeeper, you get all, everyone gets jittery. So the defence needs to trust the goalkeeper. The midfield need to know that these players are going to be in position if we lose the ball so we can actually do our thing without having fear. You know that thing we talked about for years under McCarthy, Hurst, where players would always play the, the easy pass, the safe pass, because they didn't want to make the mistake. If you trust what's behind you, you'll play that pass because you, you're fairly comfortable that whatever's behind you is going to clear it up. So trusting Danassian, which I think you do, and personally I trust Danassian far more than I would KVY to be in the right place, then he's he's worth at least in terms of contract, Bon at the other end scoring, and he's and his sign him signing a contract would be just as exciting as getting somebody to score goals at the other end. They're both important, but the defending side gets forgotten, I think sometimes. Wow. David, I think that's the perfect way to end it. Um, thank you very much, everyone who has watched today's video. David's loving for JD. And of course, everyone's <laughs> loving him at the moment. He's doing so well. Uh, David, thanks very much for joining me. Uh, let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on Junoy's the naissance. Uh, it's been fantastic. And uh, we'll wait and see if he gets a new contract. Hopefully he continues the form he's doing. And um, yeah, we'll be back for another video soon. David, thank you once again. <laughs>